Hello everybody and welcome to Nathan on Shuffle. I've got an exciting new music shuffle to showcase here today. New music shuffle is basically where I assemble a couple different album reviews into one show. Albums that are maybe a bit lesser known or that just I didn't feel like really I had enough to say to capture a full review or just because there's so many different reviews coming out, I felt like it made more sense to kind of group some together. You know, whatever the reason, it's just more a, a quick shot way to kind of recommend a few albums out to you guys that you may have missed. You know, oftentimes these end up being the more obscure releases that you may have not heard about in other forms, but it should be interesting. These are three very different albums that I'm talking about today that hopefully there's something here that could interest you. So let's get into the albums. So first is an incredible album that I wanted to highlight called The Hungry Heart by Small Tape. Now this is the project of Philip Nespital of Germany, a professional sound designer. So really that's kind of a focus off the bat is that there's great sound production on this um, because of his profession. Um, you could tell that he really knows what he's doing in the sound design area. But this is really the second album at least that I know of this artist. Uh, the other one, The Ocean, came out several years ago, which is also fantastic and recommended. This one is probably an album I almost probably should have featured on its own because it's that good, but I know it's a little bit more obscure and lesser known, so I wasn't sure how it would do on its own show, but I give this a heavy stamp of approval. I think this is an incredible album that should be heard by more people. Even though it's not in your typical retro prog style that I tend to kind of lean towards, it's a little bit more experimental and, and goes through different styles and is a little bit more modern sounding than some of the other things I do. But I just find it fantastic. It's really made a strong impression on me as an album. And Philip is just an, an outstanding artist. You know, he brings these things together and handles a lot of the instrumentation uh, himself. Vocals, guitars, piano, keyboards, percussion, electronics. And then he brings in other, other guests to kind of fill out the space of different instruments, backing vocals, saxophone, trumpet, vibraphone, cello, violin, viola, you know, just to give even more dimension to the sound, which I think is well appreciated. And so the first feature, which I kind of talked about, the sound production and design, this album is very sonically interesting. There's just a lot of kind of ear candy throughout the album, just really well produced, really great sounds, great interesting instruments and arrangements. Uh, just a really creative project. I think this Philip is kind of an underrated genius who's not only a instru multi-instrumentalist but a great sound designer and when you put these two in combination you just have a really strong project that deserves much more attention than it's getting in my opinion. Um, and the way he melds and blends different styles together of, of music, he kind of leans towards like I think there's a bit of classical, a bit of jazz, uh, and a bit of funk, and a bit of electronica. All these elements are at play, and then there's a little bit of that more traditional prog sound as well. It's kind of all mixed in, and creates a very interesting, unique stew that I think, you know, sometimes bands can sound too much like other bands. Oftentimes you could say, well, this is a, you know, sounds like Yes or Genesis, but I think what he does so well is he has those influences, but you never can pinpoint like, oh, this sounds like this. At least not for me. I, I don't really have much touchstones of like, okay, this is definitely a, a, a yes part, you know, or whatever. I think this is very unique. And sometimes the music can be a little bit more sad and dark and melancholy in certain aspects. I think there's a sort of, you know, I usually tend to gravitate towards music that's a bit more positive and uplifting but because of the variety of the instrumentation and, and how well it's made and all of that stuff I, I, I like this album for what it is and, and I think it does its job really well and adds a lot of intrigue and interest and joy into the music even though there might be some darker subject matters or whatever else so um, kind of highlighting some of the tracks I feel like I shouldn't just go through every single track but I really appreciate The Golden Siren is, is an excellent track, which begins with an electronica kind of vibe, a low-key kind of talking style vocal, um, but the vocals 
like there's some beautiful vocals in the chorus that add a cool vibe. Um, there's a heavier section kind of almost along the lines of a Stephen Wilson porcupine tree. Kind of a more modern sound to this one, but it's a strong track that I think is really cool and really modern sounding and fun. Hunger is, is definitely a highlight of the album. Maybe my favorite track of the album. It starts out with these loud horns and a super low piano over a cool beat. Kind of low-key breathy vocals before it swells with some bigger strings. There's just some interesting sounds that you hear on this. Uh, some great funky keyboards are highlighted later with some funky guitar riffing in the background. Just really cool modern vibe to it. Just kind of this cool, very hip and modern. I just really like it a lot. Um, just a great ending as well with swelling strings and horns giving a majestic quality. Just it's a seven minute song but there's so much in it and it makes it really truly progressive. It, it moves from like more subtle low-key vibes to kind of these bigger more swelling majestic vibes it's just it covers a big gamut of sounds that i think is really fantastic uh, burning house is a fantastic uh more instrumental style um that has some atmospheric keys just really interesting electronica beats some sax playing just a really cool powerful instrumental um has some cool jazzy vibes to it um really beautiful I just, it builds up, it has a rise and, and a fall to it. I just, I I really like the sound design and the jazzy feel to it. Um, and there's just some cool, like, shorter tracks that are more acoustic guitar and vocals, beautiful and uplifting. You know, there's a great balance between this kind of guitar playing, but also a lot of piano on the mix. And then the album ends with kind of this big epic called Dissolution which kind of goes through all these things in one big epic track and it moves really quickly it doesn't feel overly long it doesn't overstay its welcome there's just so much going on so much beauty and epicness this is where the most progressive traditional progressive i should say um is on display i'd say um there's a great jazz inspired solo section where it kind of moves from keyboards soloing to guitar soloing and then a saxophone solo really cool moments um, maybe even bringing to mind some classic like King Crimson vibes to it. Um, fantastic closer. It's just, it's a really cool album that's kind of hard to describe. I'm not sure I'm doing it total justice, but there's so much here to, to grab hold of. It won't be for everybody because it does have more of a modern kind of sound to it with electronica. There's even a little bit, very, very minimal kind of rapping style vocals in like the track colors, especially but there's a lot of jazziness, a lot of classical, a lot of different instruments. And to me, it just really hit a home run for me. I really love it. And I highly recommend it if you're open to this kind of type of music. So that's the first album of our new music shuffle. Second is another interesting one with an interesting background story, perhaps. This is Tillerson, Rheingold, Taranti and their album Una Storia. This is um, hearkening back to the days of Italian progressive rock of the 70s. And it really kind of has an interesting story to it. The album, it's actually called Allium Una Storia. And so it's, it's a concept album, sort of, um, because it's basically based upon an al a, a band that Andy Tillerson, who's member of the Tangent and a very notable prog figure back when he was younger in the 70s noticed a band that was playing that he really fell in love with called Allium a band he actually jammed with in Italy when he was a teenager and it was like such a life-changing moment for him just being a part of this band and and it was it says the first time he touched a synthesizer and saw an electric band play it was just made such an impression on him and it sounds like they even gave him a, a cassette tape of the of their music but this this cassette kind of got lost to time he just he lost track of it and now it's kind of an obscure band that never really released a official album out there so it's like this kind of mystery band that no one knows what they truly sounded like it's all in kind of Andy Tillerson's memory essentially and so this is kind of basically an album in the style of what that band would have sounded like and it feels plucked right from that era they they recorded it as if it was 
being made in the 70s with only 70s style instruments and production even. And so it's kind of an interesting concept that really fascinated me looking into it. I, I suggest if you're interested in any of that to kind of look on their website and so forth and kind of get the bigger picture of that story. Um, but, but because that was an Italian progressive band, they wanted to really have it be authentic. So they brought in an Italian uh, singer, uh, Roberto Taranti, who's doing all of the vocals here. And they even brought Antonio De Sarno wrote all the lyrics in this Italian style. So they really wanted an authentic feel to this to be totally like the Italian progressive rock scene and like music that would have actually been created at that time period. And it's cool because the album is kind of split into two parts. There's the first half, which is the, the old school makes, which is kind of mixed as if it was mixed back in the 70s. And then the album repeated, but in a more modern makes. And so you kind of get both sides of the coin. If you're more interested in a modern sound to this album, you can listen to it that way. But you can hear it as if it was basically released in the 70s. So I don't know. The whole concept is what really brought me towards this and really interested me. And I think the music is really successful in trying to capture that spirit. To me, that's kind of the, the headline of this review, as it were, is that there's a sense of freedom and fun on this album. It's not overly structured. There's a lot of exploration and jazzy moments and atmospheric and psychedelic moments where the music kind of goes off in different directions. But that's kind of part of its charm. It feels like it has that kind of spirit that was had back in the 70s where music, this kind of music was just being created and explored. And nowadays, I feel like People maybe stick too far in a lane of like, it's got to sound like this kind of thing. You know, we want it to sound close to the Genesis style or the Yes style. And they don't really go outside of those boxes too much sometimes. And I think this has more of that exploratory spirit that was felt back in those days. Um, and it has a very heavy jazz and Canterbury influence. There's even some saxophone playing on the album. Very nostalgic feeling, of course. Very improvisational. Um, the musicians are really on fire here. I think Andy Tillerson does an incredible job with all of the keyboard work. And Ryan, Jonas Reingold, who plays bass here and plays electric guitar, is just fantastic at what he's doing. Um, he's usually only known for for bass essentially but to hear some of his guitar playing on here is really a great feature and adds another layer to this album um really it's only three tracks long it kind of is in that style of those old school 70s prog albums like for example uh close to the edge for example where one side is one big long epic and then the second side is these two other tracks that are long as well but a little bit shorter than that opener um, I think this really, once again, gives it that old school vibe. And it's really, the three tracks are really great. The first track, um, and I apologize for pronunciation, these are in, in uh, Italian, but My Tornare, um, fantastic track with a lot of great keyboard work and Italian vocals. There's just so much going on in the mix, it's hard to kind of explain it, but there's some great melodies um, about. Six minutes in, it gets more, like I said, avant-garde and, and experimental in the sound. There's some flute sounds and saxophone, you know, different soundscapes. And then it just, it builds from there at about 10 minutes and 30 seconds in. There's an acoustic guitar that kind of complements those beautiful Italian vocals. And then piano and flute join in. And it becomes this kind of laid back jazzy vibe with beautiful playing. Um, then it goes back and kind of recalls the opening vocal hook to kind of bring that feel of this cohesive epic. So it's a great piece and a great kind of exploration in this style. And the second track is a little bit more low key and laid back. Ordine, Ordine Nuovo. Um, really great flute and horns. Once again, a very jazzy, um, partially classical almost vibe um, with some piano coming in just very laid back and just kind of has that flavor to it throughout this there's a great jazzy keyboard solo about halfway through just really cool and then it ends the album with Nel Norme di Dio a really great track as well probably one of my favorites of this group um, kind of starts as a more bluesy rocker vibe with guitar and keyboard interplay um, with an exciting build and some great Italian vocals. And then it gets back into that avant-garde kind of noodling feel with some jazz 
jazz work and stuff before it kind of moves into a more rocking section with flute work and some impressive keyboarding solo keyboard solos so it really is a great album it's hard to describe all the things that are going on here but if you're interested in the italian progressive rock scene if you like the canterbury style or your symphonic prog with a bit of jazz in the mix i think it's all here and it's all fantastic i listen to both kind of versions of the album the old makes and the newer makes I like them both. There's not really too much differentiating them to me. Um, another interesting part of this is the drums that are played by Andy Tillerson, who's not usually known for being a drummer, but really works well in, in this context. So just a really cool little album that I think deserves some, some attention. So please check out this album by Andy Tillerson, Jonas Reingold, and Roberto Taranti. Just a fantastic trio of musicians doing a really great job doing something that sounds like it could be plucked straight from that mid-70s period that Andy Tillerson was talking about. So really good. Check that one out. And then finally, kind of really off the beaten path maybe of what I usually talk about, but it's something I wanted to mention at some point. This is the album Turbo by Corey Wong and Dirty Loops. Now, this is more of an EP. It's a very short album. It's about like 30 minutes long, and, and there's about seven tracks here. But this is kind of a collaboration between two different artists, a, a group called Dirty Loops and then Corey Wong, who's a Grammy-nominated American guitarist, bassist, songwriter, podcast host, and producer based in Minneapolis, Minnesota, who's worked with several different projects. Um, one of his main bands, it looks like, is called Wolfpeck, kind of a funk pop band I, I would say um, and then Dirty Loops is more of a, a kind of this jazz fusion-y trio where they kind of do these jazzy versions of pop songs often it's kind of what they became known for and but they do some incredible stuff on their own as well they're just a great trio of bass player a drummer and a, a keyboardist slash singer and it's a great little group that really has captured my attention they have some really fun YouTube videos I recommend and like I said, it's not real. It's not progressive rock, but a lot of people I, I'd say in the progressive rock community has had some attention towards this group, Dirty Loops, because they're just such fantastic musicians and just really embrace playing their hearts out, playing these instruments to the top of their ability. They're, they're virtuosic. You know, they'll play these crazy bass lines that are just next level amazing stuff you'd never hear in, in normal pop music. But they have this vocalist, you know, um, Jonah Nilsson who's just like has this kind of great voice that's kind of like evocative of Michael Jackson at his finest you know it's just this really great pop voice that is on top of this kind of jazz fusion trio and it's just it, it's a cool vibe to me I, I just really like it and adding Corey Wong kind of on guitars um, kind of adds an interesting element to this collaboration and then there's a lot of horns that's kind of a big feature of this this album as well as that the horns that kind of punctuate everything throughout um, the, the album starts with follow the light which is more in the poppy uh, vein but has a funk jazzy vibe to it um, that's a lot of the tracks on this are instrumental but this is one of the rare uh, track with vocals with like I said uh, Jonah doing that like Michael Jackson style vocal some great jazzy playing everyone's really a talented musician it's really well well made and well written funky guitar and bass add to the horns um, the drummer is just right in the pocket it's just really fantastically played pop music you know I wish all pop music sounded more like this because it's just it's catchy and hooky and fun but it's just Everyone's playing at the top of their abilities and there's so much to grasp onto in the instrumental side of the band. I just really love it. Uh, Turbo that comes next is just excellent jazz fusion with a focus on horns um, with the bass and drums once again just totally in the pocket. A total highlight of the record. Um, this is an instrumental track and like I said a lot of this album beyond the two tracks that have vocals you could almost think of it as like just a typical jazz fusion album with incredible playing it's more along that line than pop centric you know it's jazz funk um, fusion feel 
And so Ring of Saturn, it gets more into a laid back kind of jazzy vibe. Um, almost, I almost get like a Steely Dan type vibe with the kind of jazz piano and horn arrangements that come in through the, like the main section. Just some great playing once again. Hard Top is, it gets really funky with a great groove and blasting horns, great guitar soloing throughout. Just a really cool track. Um, Hastrata, another great jazzy tune that has maybe more of a cinematic vibe in sections. It kind of fluctuates between a part with this jazzy horn section and then a more majestic, magi majestic kind of bit with strings and guitar. Um, so it's, it's a cool blend and vibe. And then Thriller comes next, which of course is the cover of the classic uh, Michael Jackson track, Thriller. More funkier, fun version to it with some great killer vocals. Jonah's voice is just really next level. Uh, the bass lines are just so fantastic. Just I really love, uh, I have to highlight the bass of, of Henrik Linder, just fantastic bass player who's always playing to the next level. You know, just listening to his bass lines are enough to make this album worthy of recommendation. Just a, there's a great horn breakdown towards the end that kind of adds a vibe to the song that's a little bit different than the original and almost an uplifting gospel type vocals towards the end to kind of bring this home. It's just a cool track. You know, I, I love classic Michael Jackson, and so this is a joy to hear this kind of jazzy, fusion-y take on it. And then the album ends with Zap, which is kind of another funky, funky track that focuses on that funky bass line before the horn comes in. Totally funky with maybe even 80s funk throwback kind of style with great emphasis on horns. I, I really like this. I, I know it's probably not going to be for everyone because it's definitely not really standard progressive rock at all. It's more of a jazz fusion type album with some pop sensibilities. But I just like to take the chance of these new music shuffles to kind of just talk about the albums that have been speaking to me lately. This is one I've been listening to a lot and that I thought there's probably someone out there who watches my shows that might be into this type of thing like I am. So just had to bring that to attention to everyone out there. So those are the three albums. Very different, kind of a dark... Darker, more modern electronica album in Small Tapes, A Hungry Heart. And then more of a throwback 70s Italian progressive rock style album with Tillerson, Rheingold, Taranti. And then a jazz fusion, you know, newer, poppier album in Turbo by Corey Wong and Dirty Loops. So hopefully something in there is for you. <laughs> I know it's kind of an eclectic grab bag, but that's kind of part of why I do these shows is to bring to attention some of these more obscure little albums that I've been enjoying out in the world. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching this. Please subscribe to my videos if you like my content, like my recommendations, you know, appreciate my musical taste. Um, I really appreciate all of the, the comments and all of the, the things that you guys do to, to tell me that you're enjoying the shows and, and the constructive feedback and all of that stuff. I just really appreciate uh, knowing there's people out there actually watching this and enjoying my content. So really appreciate that. Thank you guys so much and please keep enjoying the music. Whatever you guys got going, um, please enjoy the heck out of it. Like I try to enjoy all of the music I'm listening to. So thank you guys so much for, for everything and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video. So bye. <laughs>